Thank you, thank you very much, Rosie. Uh, it's a special honor to be here today. <clears throat> thank you uh, especially to Ed Friedman and everybody at the Robert Penn Warren Center for Humanities, uh, as well as my former student, Rosie Seagraves, uh, whom it's always a true pleasure to see again, um, since I haven't seen you since Chamithal, which was about a month ago, I think. Yeah. Um, thanks again for this extraordinary, extraordinarily kind and generous invitation to share some of my ideas with your faculty and students and, and to engage with your uh, fantastic events scheduled this week, which um, I think are coming to an end shortly. Um, my talk today is the social imaginary in the interludes of Cervantes and Calderon. And um, so what I would like to do is uh, intersperse, of course, some, some samples of uh, video per uh, performances with this. Um, what I'd like to start with, actually, is um, this, this slide. <clears throat> we, yesterday, we heard a couple of uh, speakers, um, Raymond and Marco Pieta, discuss text and performance. Um, I, can't, I can't hope to uh, elaborate any further than what they've already taught us in their excellent um, presentations. But I would like to point out a couple other items um, regarding text and performance. And one, I would like to start off by quoting uh, Valerie Hegstrom and, and Dale Pratt. Uh, we believe that the best way to teach theater is through performance. I'm a strong believer in that same pedagogy. And um, yesterday we heard uh, in Martha Vieta's presentation um, a, a very interesting uh, history of how text um, led to further representations, how text editing and text study uh, from a logocentric uh, perspective led to further representations, montajes, stagings. Um, and what I would like to point out is that this, this is from the uh, academic uh, standpoint, and she pointed out something very interesting and very important yesterday, which was that from the artistic uh, perspective, the, the staging, of course, always comes first. It's not so logocentric. It is visual. Um, and so I would like to point out this. I would like to show this uh, quote by Calderon from, clearly, from the 17th century, um, where he discusses this same idea, saying that parecerán tibios algunos trozos respecto de que el papel no puede dar de sí ni lo sonoro de la música ni lo aparatoso de las tramoyas, y si, y si ya no es que él que lea haga en su imaginación composición de lugares, considerando lo que sería sin entero juicio de lo que es, que muchas veces descaece el que escribe de sí mismo por convenciones, eh, conveniencias del pueblo y del tablado. So, Calderón was hesitant to publish uh, these texts as texts because his uh, vision of theater is precisely what Marc Hubieta was discussing yesterday, as well as um, Raymond. So um, I, I wanted to point that out to begin with. And so for my um, talk on the social imaginary and stages of illusion, there are three concepts that I would like to try to put together today as briefly as possible. And those are um, the idea of the social imaginary how that ties into the Spanish notion of ilusión in its double sense of the word, and all of this with the idea of performance. Johann Huizinga's classic study, Homo Ludens, a study of the play element in culture, stresses a point that seems to underscore the aesthetic project of early modern Spanish interludes, and which often seems to be overlooked by our contemporary critical interests. Namely, that play is an end unto itself and not a means to another end. It is the, quote, fun element that characterizes the essence of play, end of quote, Hoitzinger. Hoitzinger highlights the limitedness of play. Quote, it is played out within certain limits of time and place. It contains its own course and meaning. In this sense, play is an interlude in our daily lives, end of quote. Hoitzinger's limitedness of play is taken a step further by Victor Turner, who discusses play and ritual as liminality. Quote, in liminality, the social order may seem to have been turned upside down, 
People play with the elements of the familiar and defamiliarize them. Novelty emerges from unprecedented combinations of familiar elements, end of quote. If Spanish interludes do not, quote, break away from the normalizing roles assigned to theatrical production, end of quote, as Anne Cruz has said of uh, Cervantes, it is because all play, all games have rules which establish a sense of order. And this, according to Hoitzinger, is, quote, a very positive feature of play. It creates order, is order. Into an imperfect world and into the confusion of life, it brings a temporary, a limited, a limited perfection. I'm not sure why I'm uh, echoing. I'm sorry about that. Um, so this next slide is actually, well, it's already going, so I won't talk. Casadillas y roscones, vida breve de pavos y capones, y hojaldres, que al doctor le dan ganancia con masa cruda y con manteca rancia. Pues qué es ver, derretidos los mantebos, gastar su dinerillo en tirar huevos. En eso su locura manifiestan, que mejor es tirarnos lo que cuestan. ¿Y cómo? Veinte huevos azareños. Le cuestan 20 reales a sus dueños. Tíranmelos y manchanme un vestido. Quedo yo pesarosa y el corrido sin alzar más cabeza en todo el día. Pues cuál querré yo más por vida mía, estas galanterías criminales o en dinero escribí los 20 reales. Luisa, ya es tiempo de lograr mi traza. Yo voy y a tu galán clavo una maza. ¡Mucho hay que temer estas contiendas! No hay quien no tema en las carnes tolendas. El capón teme muerte su titania. El gallo ser corrido en la campaña. El perro de la mata al desconcierto. Las damas de que el perro sea muerto. Las estopas de verse chamuscadas. Las vejigas de estar aporreadas. La sartén si su tizne alguno finga. El agua que la sorba la jeringa. El salvado de andar siempre pisado, siempre siendo a un tiempo salvado y condenado. <risa> Cercadas nuestras ganas estos días de ejércitos de mil pastelerías y tal hambre en el cerco padecemos que hasta las herraduras nos comemos. Más todo, padrecito, se remedia. ¿Con qué, hijitas rayonas? ¡Con comedia! De otro entretenimiento no gustamos. ¡Con 
We see in this clip. This clip is from um, this clip is from this year's Chamethal uh, festival. Uh, festival. Uh, it's Teatro Cambalache from Murcia um, doing a uh, conglomeration of entremeses, and this is from Calderón's Las Carnes Tolendas. So what we see here is Carnaval as what Hoitinga has called uh, the limitedness of play, played played out within certain limits of time and place. And also, Victor Turner's notion of limil liminality, where, of course, um, when social order is turned upside down, that leads us to think directly of Carnaval. That's exactly what it is the day before um, Ash Wednesday. The other thing that is uh, of, of even more importance, I think, here, is that we see in their, in Calderon's mind and in the uh, mind of 17th century Spaniard, which he is reflecting here, is that how are games played? What types of games are played? And how is play and how are games uh, conceived in the 17th century Spanish mind? Um, some of the games that are played during Carnaval are mentioned, but the central play or game is actually a play, comedia. That's what the that's what the daughters want for Carnaval. They want a play. They want him to um, pay for a play for them to be entertained. In his Breve Tratado de la Ilusión, Julián Marías discovers a positive sense in the notion of ilusión. Quote, El que tiene expresiones como tener ilusión por algo o por alguien, hacer una cosa con ilusión, end of quote, that is inseparable from the traditional negative sense of the word, namely the sense of ilusión, as burla, engaño, or sueño, and which ultimately stems from the Latin ludus, as in Hoitzing as aforementioned comments. Marias demonstrates what he calls the condición futuriza of ilusión, the futurición de la vida humana, that is, ilusión as something present that points to something in the future. That pointing toward the future, was, which has not yet happened and is therefore not yet real, in quote, introduce una irrealidad en la realidad humana como parte integrante de ella y hace que la imaginación sea el ámbito dentro del cual la vida humana es posible, end of quote. Here we begin to see the inseparability between the positive and negative senses of ilusión. Quote, lo que nos ilusiona puede resultar ilusorio. El, ob el objeto de la ilusión puede fallar. A la ilusión la acecha la posibilidad de la desilusión. End of quote. Half of Cervantes' interludes center on the main action of ilusión as burla o engaño. In these four pieces that center on a hoax, it is desire that draws the double-edged sword of ilusión. Desire for material goods and retaliation, vizcaíno. Desire for social status, retablo. Desire for knowledge of the supernatural, cueva. And sexual desire, cueva and el viejo celoso. In the case of retablo, the two, the two interludes that I'll be discussing today actually are uh, Cervantes' Retablo de las Maravillas and Calderón's La Casa de los Linajes. In the case of Retablo, it is the townspeople's desire for social status, that is, not to be a marginal figure or the other in a Christian dominant society, that allows the prank to be played on them. It is curious to consider at this point Victor Turner's reflection on the notion of performance as, quote, an act of creative retrospection, end of quote and a, quote, restored experience, end of quote, taking experience as, quote, a willing or wishing forward, end of quote. This futurition of performance puts it in line with Marias' discussion of ilusión, and the creative function of these concepts underscores their intimate link to the social imaginary significations at play in various Spanish interludes. Quote, creation as the work of the social imaginary of the instituting society, societas instituans, not societas instituta, is the mode of being of the social historical field by means of which this field is. Society is self-creation deployed as history." End of quote. That's Castoriadis. 
um, the creative act of the social imaginary produces a new system of notions and images, illusion, that does not exist in the previously established social context. In Retablo, this phenomenon is clearly perceived as a self-creative act, since the townspeople are reliving and wishing forward their own cultural history, their own cultural experience, their own being, through allusions to their system of values and beliefs and their primal fears. They are creating themselves as they create the fantastic images, shadows reflected on the screen of their social imaginary. The inseparability of both senses of illusion is a fundamental aspect of Cervantes' treatment of this concept since it creates the structure for the ludic agon expounded on by Hoitzinger. In all eight interludes, one or both sides have great hopes or expectations, illusion in the positive sense that may or may not be realized. These hopes and dreams point toward a self-fulfillment, toward a self-discovery, a creative act of human reality that is constantly at work and constantly at risk of falling into desillusion. Like Vizcaíno and Cueva, which underscore that this spoof is a follow-up to a previous one, El Retablo de las Maravillas also refers to an ongoing series of deceptions, this time actually informing the reader spectator of the previous one carried out by the swindlers Chanfaya and Chirinos. Quote, este nuevo embuste que ha de salir tan a luz como el pasado del llovista, end of quote. This reference is relevant in that it divulges to the audience the fact that these two con artists pounce on the Achilles heel of shared social values, in this case, gullibility and superstition, in order to make their dishonest living. The new hoax consists in the strategy, uh, um, sorry, in the staging of an imaginary performance fashioned by the celebrated and illusory Italian sage Tontonello, which only pure Christians and those of legitimate birth will be able to see. Quote, que ninguno puede ver las cosas que en él se muestran que tenga alguna raza de confeso o no se ha habido y procreado de sus padres de legítimo matrimonio, end of quote. Once again, the couple seizes upon the gullibility and superstitions of an ignorant community. However, the question of honor, la negra honrilla, and the widespread fear of being considered illegitimate or of impure lineage, dos tan usadas enfermedades, as Cervantes says, opens the door to, to chicanery. The hoax in Retablo depends on the agon of city slickers set against the innocent country bumpkins and the former's thorough, uh, thorough understanding of the social imaginary of honor in 17th century rural Spain. It is, of course, a cheeky reversal of the locus communus, menosprecio de corte y alabanza de aldea, that sets in motion the positive sense of illusion through the negative sense. The postmodern notion of social imaginary, a term coined by Greek-French thinker Cornelius Castoriadis, is a rather alluring concept through which we may approach early modern Hispanic theater in general and the two interludes that I'm discussing today in particular, since it not only ties in with play and illusion, but also at the heart of this idea lies the sense of self-creation by a community. Quoting Castoriadis. Um, I call these significations imaginary because they do not correspond to or are not exhausted by references to rational or real elements, and because it is through a creation that they are posited. And I call them social because they, uh, they are and they exist only if they are inst instituted and shared by an impersonal, anonymous collective. In the case of Calderon's, we'll jump for a second, to the case of Calderon's uh, La Casa de los Linajes, Castoriadis, again, just, uh, mentions an impersonal, anonymous collective. These are the characters uh, that Calderon has, has chosen for, for this play. What we'll see is that only four of them have names, and three of those named characters are Don. The rest are not even named. They are, uh, of course, it's only a 187-line play, and Calderon's point is not to give them names, but it is ex entirely relevant to point out that these are the marginal characters in this play, La, La Casa de los Linajes, 
and the entire social, uh, social imaginary construct functions, uh, is a function of their anonymity, I should say, is a function of their anonymity, as, we, as we'll see when we get to this, um, to this play. In the case of Retablo, the workings of the social imaginary significations are played out on the intra-historical stage of the spectators made actors who appropriate the creative role of stage director and take the play game to an unexpected level of social interaction. In this sense, it is convenient to keep in mind Charles Taylor's description of the social imaginary as, quote, the ways in which people imagine their social existence, how they fit together with others, how things go on between them and their fellows, the, sp the expectations that are normally met, and the deeper normative notions and images that underlie these expectations, end of quote. Through their seemingly harmless prank, illusion in the negative sense, Chanfaya and Chirinos dig up and manipulate those deeper normative notions and images that underlie communal hopes and expectations, illusion in the positive sense. This is the basic structure of illusion in all four of Cervantes' hoax interludes, a weak point in the social imaginary is attacked, agon, in order that burla may give rise to esperanza creencia. In the end, however, the negative sense of illusion will reign supreme since this is Cervantes' play with the concept and with the characters of his interludes. Even in the cases of El Retablo de las Maravillas, La Cueva de Salamanca, or El Viejo Celoso, where the victims remain unaware, or at least not fully aware, of the prank even at the end of the play, and thus experience no sense of desilusión, the audience is indeed aware of the roguery, and this actually intensifies the tragic irony revealed in the denouement of a structural element that these interludes share with many tragicomedias of the 17th century. What sets re uh, Retablo apart is precisely the creative element of the social imaginary underscored by Castoriades, the ability of the townspeople not only to witness the marvels of the puppet show, but also to create those images that underlie these expectations. And what is more, to take this ludic imaginary beyond the established playing field. After a sardonic discussion of the fashionable poet playwrights and the current state of the theater in Madrid, due to the fact that the gobernador, AKA El Licenciado Gomecillos, fancies himself a poet, ilusión, the scammers explain the rules of the game to their dupes. Sorry. Okay. No le voy a saber responder porque hay tantos que quitan el sol y todos piensan que son famosos. Sí. Los poetas cómicos son los ordinarios que siempre se usan. Y así no hay para qué nombrarlos. Pero digo que vuestra merced por su vida como su buena gracia. ¿Cómo se llama? A mí, señor autor, eh, llámame. Uh, this is Teatro del Duende uh, performing in, in Madrid in 2006. Um, the spectators of the play within the play are thus given the illusory tools of legitimacy which will enable them to see the non-existent marvels and to examine their own questionable consciences. All the fantastic scenes to be staged before the ingenuous audience play with their deepest sense of fear and desire, emotions which will give way to the dramatic phenomenon of illusion. The creative act of making the scenes appear is left to the audience, since the entire enactment is, of course, a sham. Come on. 
I think what we can see here, among other things, is a clear example of what Calderon, what Calderon uh, mentions as the fact that the text on the page has little to do with what actu actual performance is. When we read this, this passage in the text itself, it only takes uh, less than a minute, actually, to read it. And we don't imagine this, right? But the the opportunities for different types of performances, um, adaptations and, and other things that we mentioned, we were uh, discussing yesterday, um, are, are nearly infin infinite. So the performance really, with the, with the imagination of the director and stage uh, designer, et cetera, have little to do with the text. And I think that um, Cervantes is clearly aware of, of the games to be played with um, performing the actual text. Um, in as much as culture arises in the form of play, that, is, that it is played from the very beginning, Hoitzinger, the social structure and formation in this interlude is not merely societas instituans, but also societas ludens. While the internal spectators are playing their role quite well as architects of images, they go beyond the borders of the game and break all the rules by incorporating into their illusion the quartermaster and the soldiers to be billeted. Yo, aposta, um, quote, Yo apostaré que los envía el sabio tontonelo, end of quote. It is in no way coincidental that reality invades the set, just as reality invades the set, just as Chanfaya explains to an increasingly dubious, though ever zealous, group of in, in, uh, interactive spectators that, quote, todas las reglas tienen excep excepción, end of quote. Their serious play absorbs a character, the quartermaster, that is not part of the prefabricated set of imaginary puppets uh, or characters to be displayed by Chanfaya and Chirinos. This transgression signifies the socio-historical mode of being of the townspeople who are eager to discover tangible evidence of their cohesive normality, their oneness, and, the, and of the quartermaster's complete and utter, utter alterity. It is proof of honor as a social construct, and as such, society as flux must continue to create new images to recreate itself through play. The final scene fills everyone except the quartermaster and Rabelin with a positive sense of illusion. The townspeople find evidence that there is someone more illegitimate than they, and the two stage managers are filled with the hopes and expectations of tomorrow's repeat performance, this time on a public scale. At the end of the prologue to his interludes, Cervantes mentions that he's working on a play titled Engaño a los Ojos, which translates uh, the French term 
the French art term, which I'll say uh, incorrectly, trompe l'oeil. Hmm? The modernity of this representational praxis anticipates the same game that René Magritte would present in his La Trahison des Images of 1929, reminding us that what we see is not a pipe. Oh, that's the wrong slide. And there we go. In El Viejo Celoso, uh, similarly, Cañizares takes the embossed figures as men in his house, thus blinded to the fact that a real man is actually present and indeed threatening his honor. That is, he is betrayed by images. In Retablo, the country bumpkins are betrayed by images of their own quixotic fashioning. The fact that the Patsies in Cervantes' last three interludes, Retablo, Cueva, and Viejo, remain unaware of the ruses played on them, while the tricks are explicit to the audience, intensifies the play of illusion and desillusion, and it signals society's lead role in its own unraveling. The order of play is momentarily restored at the end of each of these at the end of each of Cervantes' four hoax interludes, thus introducing into the social imaginary what uh, Julian Marias has called, quote, la posibilidad como forma de realidad, end of quote. Formal closure is indeed deferred, as Anne Cruz has asserted, and it is because the irreality brought into play by the futurition of illusión can never delineate the ultimate limit of ludus. Like Retablo, Calderón's La Casa de los Linajes visualizes the early modern Spanish social imaginary as performance. While this is only a brief sketch compared to Cervantes' more developed interlude, Calderón synthesizes in these 100, 187 lines the performativity of the social imaginary. In this case, the non-marginalized figure of Don Tristán unwittingly prepares the scene for the reversal of power afforded to the marginalized figures in what he has ironically labeled La Casa de los Linajes. I'm gonna go back a few slides. Oh. Okay, so here's a, here's a slide of the Casa de los Doce Linajes in Soria, which is now called Ayuntamiento. Um, and what happens, what happens in uh, Calderón's Entremes is that Don Tristán, who is the Madrileño Castizo, right, he marginalizes, well, he uh, uh, textually marginalizes, uh, visually marginalizes these characters who are anonymous, the anonymous community, and by calling where they live Casa de los Linajes, uh, he's using it ironically and despectively, right? Um, Clearly, these people, the, uh, these characters, be, beginning below Don Gil, these are all representatives of um, somehow marginalized uh, figures in 17th century Spanish society. These, are not clear, these characters are clearly not living in a true Casa de los Linajes. Don Tristan feels that he is obviously superior to uh, in his uh, pure lineage, which goes back to ideas of um, limpieza de sangre, which is also at the heart of the retablo, right? So this brief interlude, um, Calderón's La Casa de los Linajes, opens a window onto early modern Spain's performance of Victor Turner's aforementioned concept of liminality, in which the social order is turned upside down. In the end, the anonymous marginalized figures appropriate the power that the Madrileño Castizo has stripped them of through his ironic christening of their uh, corrala as la casa de los linajes. As in retablo, the burgo, in quote unquote, fashions themselves uh, into, this, into the uh, social dominant role of power and legitimacy, the um, absolute ideas that underscore the notion of the social imaginary.
Okay, so the next, the next two slides are, um, are brief, brief moments of students enacting the Casa de los Linajes. Actually, these are, um, sorry, these are rehearsals. Because my actual tape broke. So these are the rehearsals, that's what we have. <laughs> oh, sorry. It's a rehearsal. Okay, so students in this, in, for this play, La Casa de los Linajes, were asked uh, to go out into um, the neighborhood which we were working in, which was Lavapiés, and find modern day equivalents to these marginalized figures that we see in La Casa de los Linajes. A zurdo isn't really a marginalized figure these days, uh, nor is a sastre, right? So they were asked to go out and seek uh, marginalized figures in Lavapiés, which is fun to do, actually, um, if you know that neighborhood, right? So they came back with um, the, the, the Chinese character was uh, los chinos, no? the, 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 the stores that have taken the place of uh, what used to be called in, in, in Spain ultramarinos, which are very hard to find, I think, these days. Um, so these are the types of characters they found, they brought back, and they used as the marginalized figures. These are the figures that, in this version of the play, then, would overtake Don Tristan. Uh, it's a simple love story, but what's important, of course, in this, in this play is not the love story between Don Tristan and how his uh, uh, girlfriend Juana leaves him, but rather how the anonymous community of those living in this corrala uh, reappropriate the power from Don Tristan and put him in his place at the end and show the audience that Don Tristan is nothing, nothing more than a foolish bigot. So I think um, in, in that sense, it's very similar. It's very similar, in, uh, it's very similar to the retablo by showing how um, society is fashioning itself, is creating itself through its own uh, imaginary. In both, in both cases, they are clinging to this notion of honor, what is honor, uh, what is legitimacy, and they are reappropriating space for themselves. Um, so that's, that's what I wanted to uh, share with you today um, on those two interludes. Okay, thank you. Well, it's a, really, it's a really good question. It's something that we, we, we deal with on every trip because it's, uh, uh, that's again, again it's, it's text and performance, right? So one, the, the way that this program, the way that I set up this program was um, I would select a group of plays to study with students, that students would study with me and that I would study with them, and then we would go and see those plays performed at the, festi at the festival in Almagro. In Almagro, I would, I would arrange uh, meetings with directors, actors, actresses, workshops, um, mostly, mostly round table type discussions of, of the director's um, uh, artistic vision 
of what they did with the text. And so when we were preparing, when we would prepare for the plays uh, by studying them in Madrid before going to Almagro, one of the things that we al always discussed was how do you imagine this play being performed? How do you, how can we as students read the play as directors? Because we need to be visualizing these texts. Texts are meant to be performed, visualized, not read, clearly. So that's one of the aspects. And then we would go and see how they were performed. Students would write up a review of the play in the sense that, which also often included their comments on how the director took it in a different way than what they had expected. Um, not sure why the director cut this part out, why the director did this. So it was a, um, I found it to be a very uh, deep engagement with the entire theater experience for, uh, for the students by, by enabling them to study the plays and then take it beyond, take it to the theater, watch the plays, and then meet the professionals behind the scenes, um, as well as tour the theaters. We got to tour the Hospital de San Juan, which is the great big theater in, um, in Almagro, and uh, uh, do some things that are not necessarily allowed, so I won't mention what they were. I don't want to be turned in. Yes. That's correct. Um, th that's an excellent question. I think, in my, from my perspective, I see the, the entre meses completely different in that regard to the comedias. Uh, I think the entre meses, what we see is play as play, right? So this is a moment. This is a moment where the playwrights open a window into the lim the liminal state. It's the state of play, of flux, of play as the, end re as the end goal, no further objective. Whereas if we, find, if we take a play like the Caballero de Olmedo, um, you know, or, or any of the comedias, what we find is the um, order, disorder, order paradigm, typically, right? There is a lot of that in Entremeses as well, but I think the Entremeses are open as a, as a game, and every game has its rules. You play the game, and then of course, games always must end, right? But I don't think they necessarily lead us back to that state of order after the chaos that we typically see in the committee. I don't see it that way. I see it a little bit differently. So I see it as opening a possibility, uh, a possibility for, um, well, illusion, the possibility for um, a new form, a new place, a new way to behave or to act, and you can go back to that. And that's, oh, that's, that's now there. That's, that has become part of the spectator. I, that's how I view it. If, uh, I could be off. I probably am. Those are undergrads.
Um, the best person to answer that would be Rosie, who participated in the, um, in, in the, in the program. But the way that it worked, oh, so, so I sort of mentioned what I did. That was from the more theoretical, the more theoretical perspective. The other class that the students took was with a uh, professional stage director, and he was the one that you heard in the, in the um, rehearsals uh, shouting out the corrections, uh, you know, the, either the words or open your mouth, abre la boca. Uh, that's not me, because I'm not, I'm not a professional theater person. He is a professional theater person. So they sort of got both from both of us and from their experience with working professionals um, in the field. But I'll let Rosie, if, if you have anything to add to that. Yeah, and I think, I think one of the things that is clear by doing, by doing this um, exercise is how relevant these plays are today. These plays are highly relevant today. You, you stage the retablo, the Casa de los Linajes. It's not all about 17th century honor, how boring. No, it's very relevant today. It just needs to be understood and, and portrayed, explained in, the, in modern terms, I think, which doesn't mean necessarily modernizing the language, but it can. Thank you very much.